What the Pura Sangue is, is a kind of car that thus far Ferrari buyers haven't been able to access. It's a taller, more practical Ferrari that's supposed to complement the super sports cars rather than replace them. Think of it as a kind of Lamborghini Urus, Aston Martin DBX, or maybe even a Porsche Cayenne Turbo S rival. Because Ferrari insists that Pura Sangue is not an SUV, it's an FUV a Ferrari utility vehicle. When the technology changes and the market changes and you decide you do want to do one, you're going to have to come up with something a bit special. And a bit special in this case involves a little bit of this, quite a bit of this, and a whole load of this. got? Well it's actually a car that's quite a bit smaller than you think for a start because it's just not on the same scale as an Urus or a DBX. In fact it's quite a lot shorter, very much lower but just a smidge wider so it's quite four square, quite chunky. And then at the front you've got shades of SF90 296 GTB, you can definitely feel this has got the Ferrari familial face. But then there's a big gap underneath, like all supercars it needs to feed that front min mounted engine. The headlights are actually down here, so these bits are aero channels that do different things, like vent over pressure from the top of the wheel arch and stop the car rising up at speed. And then as you come down the side it gets even more interesting, there's loads of little flicks that sort of shave the air around the front wheels and then there's these big aero buttresses here I can actually touch my hands together and they feed her away from the windscreen to give it a sort of sharper aerodynamic profile. It's got 22 inch wheels at the front and 23 inch wheels at the back and coupled with a low nose and kind of big back it gives it a kind of sprinty quite aggressive stance it always looks like it wants to go fast and then in profile you really do notice this big black wheel arch that runs then along the sills of the car and over the back wheel arch and actually these big Big haunches are massive. It's got really big thighs. Look at these, which are really muscular, are very racehorsey. There's more aero flicks, more gap, so you see lots of little aerodynamic aids all the time. And then at the rear, again, Ferrari familiar, so you get shades of SF90, 296 GTB, that sort of stuff. There's a little spoiler up here, which is interesting because if you look underneath it, the spoiler has little under spoilers. Now they're supposed to accelerate the air over the rear windscreen and keep it clean because it hasn't got a rear windscreen wiper. In my experience, in the conditions that we've been having here this week, I think it's actually quite nice at the rear. Is it successful overall? It's also a bit different on the inside to anything we've seen before from the Italian brand. For a start, there are four seats and four doors. Front doors like this, rear doors like this. Now Ferrari calls them comfort doors and a pillarless option was actually considered but it made the Porta Sangue a little bit too wobbly so this was the solution they came up with. And actually there's quite a bit more space in the back than you think and it's a lot easier to get into than it looks. And actually Although you wouldn't want to be too tall or have massive feet, there is quite a lot of space. This is me behind my own driving position. And then when you want to shut the door, you just press a button. Just look at this. Now, Ferrari could have just taken one of the dashes from one of its sports cars and plonked it in here, but it doesn't feel like it has. It's got a twin cockpit arrangement, so it's kind of mirrored over in the passenger side. And the passenger has their own screen to play with, so they can alter the music, sort the sat-nav out, and all that kind of stuff. And then in front of the driver, you have a very complicated wheel with lots of haptic buttons on, including the Manatino, which changes all the suspension settings. One thing I do miss straight away is the start button, because now it's a little haptic pad there. And I think starting an engine should be a more mechanical process. I actually want a button to press rather than a little haptic touch thing. It's a bit disappointing, really. It's interesting there's a lot of new tech in here as well. So instead of a load of buttons, what you have is this little rotary controller. If I tap it, it pops out of the dash like this, and then you can select different functions. So if I want to change the fan speed, I tap the fan, and then I turn it whichever way, and then I can come back, change the temperature, do that, and you can do that with everything. So if you want to change the seats, I press the seat icon, and then you've got massage heat, all the rest of it. I think this is great. Sat here, 
it's really useful and it looks really slick. But I've found when I'm driving down a bumpy road or I'm on a motorway or I'm actually just doing any kind of driving function, this is quite small and quite complicated and I don't think that's a good thing. Now, obviously, if you own one of these, you have it completely set up and it's perfectly normal. But other than that, there's lots of carbon fiber, as you might expect. The seats are super technical, super comfortable. I've done a couple of thousand miles in this car now and it just feels really, really good to sit in, which is important. There's plenty of practical things. Where the Super Series sports cars are all about focused on driving fast, this has more touring ability. So you've got wireless charging here, you've got a couple of decent cup holders, um, you've got a little shelf here with some USB-Cs. It feels like the kind of car that you can do more miles in. Um, and actually, it, being a strict four-seater, there is no five-seat option. The back seats are electrically adjustable. You can get really comfortable. You've actually got quite a good view because these seats are quite slim in the headrest and quite slim in the backrest, so it feels quite airy. Also, standard is a carbon fiber roof to lower the center of gravity, but you can also have um, an electrochromic full panoramic glass roof, and that really does help keep the interior feel light and airy, which means the Ferrari had no sat nav. And I found that incredibly annoying in a car this expensive. I would expect a little bit more um, I don't really rate uh, in-car sat-navs that go out of date and stuff like that, but with my phone dropping out, it really did bother me. Isn't huge but if you do a little bit of Jenga and pull some of the trim pieces around a little bit so you take this false floor out there's actually a good space under there the back seats automatically fold flat now it's not a perfectly flat surface but it does give you a good old space in which to chuck stuff Ferrari is also going to do a set of accessories for carrying things like bikes and skis so it does suggest but the main event for the Puro Sangue has to be the fact that it remains resolutely analog in the engine department there's no hybrid there's no electricity apart from the 48 volt system that supports the active dampers this is pure unadulterated naturally aspirated v12 power and it is glorious The panoramic roof that helps lighten the interior costs roughly the same as a brand new Dacia Duster at 12 and a half grand. Of course, we know this engine. 6.5 litres, 12 cylinders, 715 brake horsepower at 7,750 RPM. And it's also got 528 pounds-feet of torque. But it's worth noting that 80% of that torque is ready to go at 2,100 RPM, so it never feels short of grunt. And lots has changed. The cylinder head is nicked from the 812 Competizione, and there are new valves, conrods, and a naughty new exhaust. Really send it, and you're looking at hitting 62 miles an hour from rest in 3.3 seconds, and up to 193 miles an hour top speed, so it is not going to get embarrassed by much short of a proper supercar. And that's not bad when you consider it weighs just under 2.2 tonnes. There's something about all of those cylinders just doing their thing, and then changing down through the gears and feeding it into a corner that makes a V12 a very special experience. Where all the other fast big things that other manufacturers produce always feel like very fast SUVs, the Puro Sangue doesn't feel related to something else. It really does feel like its own thing, which is exactly what the company was hoping to achieve.